We start with a 4x4 chessboard, and we're given some 2x1 dominoes to place on the board. There are a couple rules. Two dominoes can't overlap. And a domino can't stick off the edge of the board. The goal is to cover the board completely using these dominoes. This type of covering is called a tiling. Here's our first problem. If we remove these two corner squares, can the board still be tiled? Let's start by just placing some dominoes and seeing what happens. When we get to the end, we have these two green squares that aren't covered. In fact, no matter how we arrange the dominoes, there will always be two uncovered green squares. To see why, let's look at the original board. There were eight white and eight green squares, but when we removed the corners, we were left with six white squares and eight green squares. The reason this is a problem is that each domino covers two adjacent squares, which means they will always cover one white and one green square. If we're left with two green squares, there's no way they can be tiled by a domino, so it's not possible to tile this board. Here's our next problem. Starting with the original chessboard, if any two squares of opposite colors are removed, can the board always be tiled? It turns out it's always possible to tile a chessboard as long as the removed squares are of opposite colors. Let's see how this can be done. We'll replace each square with a node to turn the board into a graph. We can traverse this graph, visiting each node exactly once before returning to the starting point. This type of path is known as a Hamiltonian cycle. There are several of them, and it doesn't matter which one we use. Let's pick one and go along the path, placing dominoes one before the next. By the end, we've found a tiling of the board. Now let's remove two squares, and color the corresponding nodes red. Going back to our path, we'll choose a red node and start from the first blue node after it. Now we'll just place the dominoes as before, skipping over the other red node. And we can see that we found a tiling of the altered board. To see why this works, let's pick two arbitrary adjacent nodes to be red. In this case, the tiling is trivial since we can just follow the path, ignoring the red nodes. Now let's move one of the red nodes. If we move it one step, they would correspond to two same colored squares on the board, so we need to move it again. Now the red nodes split the path into two sections, each with an even number of nodes, so they can be tiled as before. Taking another two steps, we've added room for another domino in the intersection, and removed room for a domino in the outer section, so again, tiling works as before. This logic applies for any two valid locations of the red nodes. For the final problem, we're given L-shaped dominoes that cover three squares. The board will have any square removed. Find a simple way to always tile the board using these dominoes regardless of where the removed square is. To do this, we'll divide the board into four 2x2 sections. Next, locate the removed square and tile the rest of its section with a single domino. Then locate the three remaining central squares and cover them with a domino. Finally, place dominoes on the corners, and that's it, we've found a tiling for every board with a single square removed. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.